Hello everyone and welcome back. Till the last session we have seen the LL1 parsing procedure. In that session we also learned that a grammar which is capable of LL1 parsing is called LL1 grammar. So in this session we are going to observe some solve problems where we try to determine whether a given grammar is LL1. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we are going to observe Five solved problems on whether a grammar is LL1. Consider the first question. Find out whether the following grammar is LL1. So this is the grammar given. And as you can observe, it includes three production rules. So let's try to solve it. Now we know in order to find out whether a given grammar is LL1 or not, we need to construct the LL1 parsing table for that. And before we construct the LL1 parsing for a particular grammar, we need to find out the first and follow of the non-terminals involved in that grammar. Now notice, in this grammar, we only have the non-terminal S. So let's find out the first of S. Now if you observe, the non-terminal S is involved in three different production rules. So if we take the first production rule, that is this right hand side, we can say, this is the first terminal symbol, that is this small a, which will be produced if we choose this particular production rule. So definitely, in first of S, we are definitely going to include the terminal symbol small a. Now consider the second production rule. Observe, b is the terminal symbol here. So if we use this particular production rule, in that case, this terminal symbol b is going to be the first terminal which will be derived during the process of derivation. Therefore, in the first of s, alongside small a, we are definitely going to include the terminal symbol b. Now consider the last production rule. s can be rewritten as epsilon. So therefore, S is also capable of generating epsilon. This means, first of S will also include the symbol epsilon. So these are the firsts of S. Let's find out the follow of S now. Now in this particular grammar, S is the only non-terminal. Additionally, it is also the start symbol. And we know what follows the start symbol. Yes, it is the dollar symbol. So we are going to include the dollar symbol in the follow of S naturally. Now consider the first production rule. Here, the non-terminal S is being followed by the terminal symbol small b. Therefore, in the follow of S, we are going to include this terminal symbol b. Consider the second production rule. As you can observe, here this particular S, that is the start symbol S, it is being followed by the terminal symbol small a. And therefore, in the follow of S, we will also include the terminal symbol small a. So these are all the firsts and follows of S. Let's now construct the LL1 parsing table. As the grammar involves only a single non-terminal, so we are going to have only a single non-terminal for the rows. Now what about the terminal symbols? We have got A, we also have B, and alongside A and B, we are going to consider this dollar symbol as another terminal symbol. Now for the non-terminal S, the first of S has the symbols A, B, and Epsilon. Now consider the production rules. This is the production rule which should be used in case S is on the stack and the look ahead symbol is A, isn't it? Because as you can see, this is the production rule A is going to be generated from. So definitely the production rule S can be rewritten as A followed by capital S followed by small b followed by capital S is going to be placed in the column of A. Now what about the column of B? Look at the production rule. S can be rewritten as B followed by capital S followed by small a followed by S. This is the production rule which generates B as the first terminal symbol during the process of derivation. So clearly, under the column of B, we are going to place the production rule S can be rewritten as B followed by capital S followed by small a followed by S. Now first of S also includes the symbol epsilon. And why so? Because S has got the production rule, S can be rewritten as epsilon. And due to this, we are supposed to consider the follow set as well. I hope you remember this right. Because whenever S will be generating epsilon, these are the symbols which will be generated. So the production rule, S can be rewritten as epsilon, will be placed under all these. So let's place them. Now notice the L1 parsing table bit carefully. Observe, from a parser's point of view, Having the non-terminal symbol S in the stack, and if at the same time the look ahead is saying A, the parser has two different production rules to choose from. 
and this will confuse the parser definitely. Honestly, the parser doesn't really know which production rule to use from these two. Basically, it doesn't really know whether it should generate or it should end. And the same can be stated if we have the non-terminal s in the stack and simultaneously if the locator is b. Therefore, this particular grammar is clearly not L1 grammar. And why is so? Because the L1 parser is going to predict the next move, basically predict the next production rule to use, but in that case, it is going to be confused due to these entries. Therefore, clearly, it is not an L1 grammar. Let's now move on to the next question. This time, we need to find out whether this particular grammar is L1 or not. So, let's try to solve it. Now, as you can observe, just like the previous one, here also a single non-terminal is involved. So, let's find out the first of S. Now, if we consider this particular production rule, that is S can be rewritten as open parenthesis followed by S followed by close parenthesis. In that case, we will include this terminal symbol, this open parenthesis in the first of S. Now, apart from this, S has got another production rule, that is S can be rewritten as epsilon. And since S can generate epsilon, therefore, epsilon will also be included in the first of S. Let's now find out the follow of S. Now, here also, S happens to be the start symbol. Therefore, in the follow of S, naturally, the dollar symbol will be included. Now, if we consider this particular production rule, as you can observe, S here is being followed by the close parenthesis, right? So, follow of S will also include the symbol close parenthesis. Let's now create the L1 parsing table. Now, the grammar only includes the non-terminal S. All we need to do is figure out the terminal symbols. So, what are the terminal symbols involved in this grammar? Observe the open parenthesis, the close parenthesis, and alongside these two, we are also going to include this dollar. So, let's include that. Now, in the first of S, we have this open parenthesis as the terminal symbol. So, this production rule S can be rewritten as open parenthesis followed by S followed by close parenthesis. This is going to be placed in the column of open parenthesis because using this production rule, the terminal symbol open parenthesis will be generated at first during derivation. Now, S has got another production rule that is S can be rewritten as epsilon. And due to this, we need to consider the follow set as well. Now, in the follow set, we have the symbols this dollar and close parenthesis. So, the production rule S can be rewritten as epsilon will be placed in the column of dollar and the close parenthesis as well. Now, observe the L1 parsing table. There is only a single row and for every single column, there are single entries in each one of them. So, clearly, the predictive parser during parsing will not have any sort of confusion and that's the reason why this grammar is actually an L1 grammar. Let's now move on to the next question. Find out whether the following grammar is L1 or not. So, this is the grammar which we have been given. So, let's try to solve it. Now, as you can observe, this grammar includes three different non-terminals. So, let's try to find out the first and follow of all of them first. Now, you already know, since we will be starting off with the first, we are going to begin the process with the non-terminal placed at last in the list of production rules. Observe, the non-terminal B can be rewritten as epsilon. Therefore, in the first of B, we are going to have the symbol epsilon. And similar to this one, since A can also be rewritten as epsilon, hence in the first of A, we are going to have the symbol epsilon as well. Now, what about S? Finding the first of S is going to be very interesting. Consider this production rule. Here we have the non-terminal capital A, which is being followed by small a. Now, during derivation, if this A generates epsilon, because this is the only thing it can generate, in that case, small a is going to be the first terminal which will be generated during the process of derivation. Therefore, in the first of S, we are definitely going to include the terminal symbol A. Now, S has got another production rule that S can be rewritten as this. Now, if we consider this particular right-hand side, observe, here in the sentential form, Capital B is the non-terminal which comes at first. Now, according to this particular grammar, B can only derive epsilon. Therefore, if the non-terminal capital B derives epsilon, in that case, during derivation, the small b that is this terminal is going to be the first terminal which will be generated during derivation. So, clearly, in the first of S, we are going to include the terminal symbol small b. 
Let's now find out the follows. Now, as you can see, in this particular grammar, the start symbol S doesn't really appear in any of the right hand side of any of the productions. Therefore, in the follow of S, we are only going to have the dollar symbol. Now, let's find out the follow of A. Observe, this is the production rule where in the right hand side, the non terminal symbol capital A appears. And considering this, here, capital A is once being followed by small a, then again it is also being followed by small b. Therefore, in the follow of A, we are first going to include the terminal symbol A due to this. Thereafter, we will also include the terminal symbol B due to this. So, in the follow of A, we are going to have both the terminal symbols A and B. Let's now find out the follow of B. Observe, this is the production rule where B appears on the right hand side. And considering this, here, B is being followed by small b first. So, in the follow of B, we will have the small b terminal. Also, capital B is also being followed by small a in here. Therefore, in the follow of B, we will also include the terminal symbol A. So, these are all the firsts and follows of all the dot terminals involved in this grammar. Let's now create the L1 parsing table. Now, in this particular grammar, observe the terminal symbols that we have. It is A. We also have B. And alongside this, we are going to consider the dollar symbol as well. Now, in the first of S, we have A and B both. And clearly, this is the production rule which will be used in case we have S in the stack and the look ahead is A. Therefore, let's place the production rule in here. Now, what about the look ahead being B? Clearly, this is going to be the production rule which the parser will select in case the look ahead is B. So, let's place the production rule in here. Now, S cannot really generate epsilon, so we need not worry about the follow set. Now, coming to A and B, as you can observe, in the first of both of these, we have got epsilon. So, in both these cases, we are going to consider the follow set. Now, in follow of A, we have the symbols A and B. Therefore, in the column of this terminal symbol for the row of capital A, we are going to place the production rule A can be rewritten as epsilon. And also, we have got B in the follow set of A. So, we will use the same production rule for the column of B as well. Now, what about the non terminal B? In the follow of B, we have the terminal symbols B and A. Therefore, the production rule B can be written as epsilon is going to be placed in the column of B and also in the column of A. Now, notice this L1 parsing table. None of the rows have multi valued attributes. And this clearly means that during parsing, the L1 parser will have no confusion regarding predictions. So, clearly, this particular grammar happens to be an L1 grammar. Let's now move on to the next question. Now, this time we are to determine whether this grammar is L1 or not. So, let's try to solve it. As you can observe, there are two different non terminals involved in this grammar. So, let's find out the first and follow of those two. Now, coming to A, as you can see, A can be rewritten as small a. So, in the first of A, we will have the terminal symbol small a. Now, what about S? That is the start symbol. The start symbol S is involved in two different production rules. Now, if we consider the first one, the first of capital A includes the terminal symbol A. Also, using the second production rule, S can directly generate small a. Therefore, in the first of S, we are going to have the terminal symbol A. Now, let's figure out the follows. As you can observe, the start symbol S doesn't really appear in any of the right hand sides. So, naturally, in the follow of S, we are going to have only the symbol dollar. Now, what about the follow of A? This is the production rule where A appears in the right hand side. And as you can observe, whatever will follow the left hand side will also follow the right hand side. Therefore, in the follow of A, we are also going to have the dollar symbol. Now, notice this a bit carefully. In the L1 parsing table, for the terminal entry A, the non terminal S will enlist two different production rules that S can be written as capital A or S can be written as small a. And due to this, the predictive parser L1 is going to be confused as it now has to decide from these two production rules which one to choose during parsing. And due to this, we can state this particular grammar is not an L1 grammar. Notice, in order to declare whether a grammar is L1 or not, we need not create the L1 parsing table all the times. Rather, if we notice the firsts and follows a bit more carefully, 
Some of the times we can determine whether the grammar is L1 or not from that only. Let's now move on to the last question. So this is the grammar which we have to find out whether it is L1 or not. So let's try to solve it. As you can observe, this grammar involves three different non-terminals S, B and C. So let's find out the first and follow of these. Coming to C, observe, C has got two different production rules which it is involved in. And these are, C can be rewritten as small c followed by capital S or C can be rewritten as epsilon. So in the first of C, we are going to have the symbols small c and epsilon. Now what about the first of B? Similar to capital C, if you observe, B is also involved in two different production rules and following this production rule, B gets to produce the small b first and also B can produce epsilon. So clearly in the first of B, we are going to have the symbols, the terminal symbol B and epsilon. Now what about S? S can be rewritten as small a followed by capital B. Using this production, we can clearly say the first of S is going to include the terminal symbol a and since S can also derive epsilon, therefore in the first of S, we are also going to have the symbol epsilon. Now what about the follow? Observe, S is the start symbol. So in the follow of S, it will have the dollar symbol. Now coming to B, B appears in, in this particular production rule and this happens to be the rightmost non-terminal in the right hand side. Therefore, whatever is following S will also follow B and for that reason, in the follow of B, we will also have the symbol dollar. Now what about C? This is the production rule where C appears in the right hand side and also this is the rightmost element in the right hand side. Therefore, whatever will follow B will also follow C and that's the reason why in the follow of C, we are going to have the symbol dollar. Now another thing to notice, observe, S appears in the right hand side of this particular production rule and here it is the rightmost symbol in the right hand side. Therefore, S should also follow whatever is following C and since in the follow of C we have the dollar symbol, so S will also have the dollar symbol which it already has. So these are all the first and follow of all the non-terminals involved in this grammar. Let's now construct the L1 parsing table. Now in this particular grammar, the terminal symbols that we have are A, B, C and alongside these three, we are also going to keep the terminal symbol dollar. So let's do that. Now for the non-terminal S, in the first of S, we have the symbol A. So the production rule S can be rewritten as small a followed by B. This will be kept in the column of A. Now coming to B, the first of B includes the terminal symbol B. Therefore, in the column of B, the production rule B can be rewritten as small b followed by capital C will be placed. Now coming to the non-terminal C, observe, in the first of C, we have the terminal symbol small c. Therefore, in the column of C, the production rule capital C can be rewritten as small c followed by capital S will be placed. Now consider the follow sets. Now why we are considering the follow sets? Because all the non-terminals can generate epsilon on their own. Now observe, for all the non-terminals, in the follow sets, we have the only dollar symbol. Therefore, in the L1 parsing table for the column of dollar, we are going to include all the epsilon productions. Now look at the L1 parsing table. None of the rows have multivalued attributes. That is, no confusion for the predictive L1 parser which obviously suggests that this particular grammar happens to be an L1 grammar. So, in this session, we observed five solved problems on whether a grammar is L1 or not. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to practice a few more solved problems on finding out whether a grammar is L1 or not. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.